גיל חובב שלום. שלום שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. Ah, it's a pleasure and an honor. גיל, uh, I don't know even how to begin to describe you. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should leave it uh, for you to do. But before yes. I do, I will say only one thing. You are part of the Israeli royalty. Ah. And I'm not talking about a normal royalty, I'm talking about the Hebrew language royalty. <laughs> so I think this will be a nice start. So first of all, I'm relieved because usually they say nobility and now we're talking about royalty, so I have made some progress, I understand. No, I do not believe in, in uh, you know, dynasties and, and uh, aristocracy and things like that. But it's true that I'm the great-grandson of Eli Eliezer ben Yehuda, the reviver of the Hebrew language. And in my family, we tend to rank cities in Israel according to the size of the street that we got. So in Tel Aviv, you know, you have a very big ben Yehuda street in Jerusalem as well. Haifa, they could do better, but what can we do? And you were born and raised in Jerusalem? Born and raised in Jerusalem, lived there for 25 years, and for the past 25 years I'm in Tel Aviv. And for some reason, today, if we'll stop uh, uh, an occasion uh, street walker in Israel, he will uh, probably immediately associate you with food. Yes. First of all, it's because I'm fat. <laughs> um, yeah, I have been working, I still am working as a restaurant critic for the past 25 years. And being a restaurant critic, I started hosting TV shows about food. I published many cookbooks, but I never worked in a restaurant and I never studied cookery. Although I have great, you know, I respect people who did, but I have never studied cookery, not for one day. What we fondly describe as a professional amateur. Yes, yes. Uh, but I, usually I describe myself as someone who cooks like your aunt or something like that. You know, I'm you know, an elderly woman cooking for fun. In, and, one, in uh, one of your books, if I'm not wrong, a wonderful book, if I may say so myself. You, you may, by the way. You have, <laughs> you have written so beautifully about your grandmother yes. and her cooking. Yes, well, the love of food came from my grandmother who wasn't a professional cook as well, uh, but who was a great woman, a very intelligent woman, a very beautiful woman, and a very amusing woman. So for me, the way to spend time with her was to be her assistant in the kitchen, although she would never let me because she was Moroccan, and with Moroccans, you know, men in the kitchen bring only two things, dirt and bed luck. <laughs> so she used to chase me away, um, but whatever I know about cooking, I know from watching her, listening to her stories, and missing her, missing her very much. And I know that from time to time you take, uh, a ta you take some time out from your very busy schedule, because it's not only uh, TV, it's also radio and maybe even newspapers. It's radio, it used to be newspapers, it's books. It's I'm books, an of course. author and a publisher, I have my own publishing house. And it's mostly lectures. I, I give lectures about you, my crazy family. And yeah. you go abroad. Yes. And you go abroad, so in a way, uh, again, using the nice uh, term uh, a professional amateur, you are an ambassador <laughs> of Israel. Uh, a very small ambassador, and usually uh, I embarrass people, so maybe I'm an embarrassador. <laughs> No, I, I, the idea is to talk about Israel and to talk about what is being an Israeli in simple terms. I am not, you know, I'm not a big scholar. I have only a bachelor degree, summa cum laude, but a bachelor degree. <laughs> and uh, I like to talk about what we Israelis think, what we eat, how we live. Uh, personally, I'm gay. I have a partner. We have a daughter. This is some, but something that not many people know, that in Israel, it's, it, Israel is very liberal about gay rights, about gay parenting. All of our gay and lesbian friends have children. And we all served in the army, of course. And um, so I'd like to talk about things that are 
usually not talked about when one refers to Israel, usually it's the conflict or, you know, Jewish culture. I'm an Israeli, I'm not necessarily a... Well, primarily I'm Israeli, not Jewish. Of course I'm Jewish, I was born Jewish, but if you ask me what I am, I'm first Jewish, then gay, then... No, sorry, first Israeli, Israeli, then gay, then Jewish. And Gil, uh, talking about Israeli culture, and yep. this is what is this uh, humble uh, Facebook page of ours is all about. Uh, if you had, it might be an unfair question, so I apologize in advance, but if you had to try and characterize the Israeli culture, uh, how do you see it? What does it mean uh, for you? Well, it has to deal with Hebrew, of course. Hebrew is very dear to me. Uh, I would say, you know, usually they say that the difference between the United States and Canada is that the United States is a melting pot and Canada is a quilt. So Israel would be more of a quilt than a melting pot, but a Hebrew quilt. And Israeli culture is very colorful, very surprising. You see things that you won't believe when you meet them. Talk about food, you have the strangest food in Israel. You know, you can have Ethiopian food and burn because it's so hot, and you can have Polish food and you can have Russian food and Arab food, which is exquisite. Or if you talk about music, you know, you have the most amazing stuff and you have the shittiest, shittiest pop songs that really, you, you, you know, you, you think of them and you blush. And I love them all. <laughs> Do you have favorites? that you are willing to disclose. Let's say your favorite uh, author, your favorite uh, musician. Well, my favorite singer would be either Chava Alberstein or Nechama Handel, so that's a bit old. My favorite, it's our generation. Yes, okay, yeah. my favorite Israeli author. It's a good question. Not including yourself. No, 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 no. Let's forget about me. <laughs> um, uh, I would say either Amos Oz or Meir Shalev. I'm, I'm quite uh, again, again, conservative. Our generation, yeah. um, a good film. I don't watch cinema. Uh -huh. I have a rule that I'm not to watch any film made by a person carrying an American passport. Okay. And uh, Israeli cinema, you know, every once in a while I do watch it, but it's not uh, it's okay. not my favorite uh, art. Okay. What about dance? Nope. No. And no television as well. Okay. Although I do, I, I myself, I'm, I'm doing a lot of television. My last series was about interviews with the Nobel laureates all over the world. Right. But a wonderful uh, series. Ah, thank you very much. I, I thought you'd never say, it. but uh, <laughs> I usually I don't watch television because when I was a kid, my grandmother television only started in Israel. My father was one of the founders. And whenever I would go even near the television, my grandmother would shout at me. We lived with her. It's better to read a book. Go and read a book. Don't be lazy in front of that Satan, the television. So I just can't watch television. Rings a bell, I it must does? say. I must say. Yes. And this is maybe the time to uh, mention your late father, Moshe Kovav. Yes. With his very radiophonic voice. Yes. And his wonderful it. Hebrew. Yes, he had a very distinct Hebrew, a very precise Hebrew. Uh, he came from a Yemenite family and usually Yemenite people speak better Hebrew, from that generation at least. Uh, he was the news announcer in the days when we had only radio and not television. He was very dark, look at me, I'm so pale, I guess the milkman was Polish. <laughs> and uh, he was extremely handsome. It skips a generation. I'm not sure. But, uh, um, but uh, he, was, he was a very sweet man. Everybody remembers, you know, him um, reading the, the, the news about the liberation of Jerusalem or the, or the uh, of course, the October War or the death of Ben-Gurion. But the truth is that what I remember about him mostly is that he was very, very funny. He was extremely funny. Wonderful. He was a clown. Wonderful. Uh, trapped inside the body of a news announcer, <laughs> but he was a very sweet man. Really. Sounds a bit uh, schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> and you haven't met my, my mother yet. My mother was the crazy one, a true diva. 
and uh, it's extremely beautiful again the generation skip not sure and uh, <laughs> my mother can I tell you about the best lesson I got from my mother please go ahead I don't think it has much to do with Israel you know what it is Israeli culture actually I was seven years old I was with my mother at the radio she was uh, working at the radio as well as my father and we took a taxi home and we passed by a park in central Jerusalem and a black person was walking on the pavement and two kids were running after him and shouting Kushi 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 in Hebrew means nigger they, ins they insulting yes them. my mother started screaming she told the driver stop the car immediately rushed out of the car and she was a very elegant lady you know on high heels she chased the kids into the park I was hysterical I was seven years old I was sure that they're going to beat her up so I ran to the park as well and I saw her catching them in their hair like this giving each of them two slaps wow and she said you would never ever on this land say cushy or nigger never ever this time you're only slapped if I see you any other time shouting such insults I'm going to kill you <laughs> And I think that this violence was in its place. And it was the best lesson I got for, for, for not being toler not tolerating um, you know, racism. And these two young boys are probably still grateful for your to your mother. Yes, and if they said nigger again, I hope they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we almost forget, forgot asking you the most important question. What is it? Since you are a, a professional amateur when it comes to food. Yes. Talking about the Israeli cuisine. Yes. Which, Does it exist? Which sometimes people uh, like uh, to describe as fusion. Some say even confusion. <laughs> yes. How do you see the Israeli cuisine and which is your favorite dish? Aha. Well, first of all, the Israeli cuisine does not yet exist. In a few centuries, we'll do this interview again, and then we, we would be able to be proud of our own, you know, national cuisine, but we're too young for that. Again, it's a quilt. It's a wonderful quilt, very colorful, very tasty, with great restaurants, great restaurants, but they're not Israeli restaurants. They're restaurants with Israeli flavor, but, you know, it's either that they're modern Western restaurants or that they're very old restaurants belonging to the national cuisines of immigrants, let's say, Tripolitan or, or I don't know, Moroccan or Arab, of course. Don't or, forget the Romanians. There are not so many good Romanian restaurants. It's, it's a tragedy, but there are not so many. Um, what would be my favorite dish? What would be my favorite dish? I would say it's Kubane. Kubane is the traditional Yemenite bread that you eat for brunch on Saturdays. Interesting. We would have it every Saturday morning at my grandmother's in Katamon. Katamon. And her grandchildren would come to her house in Katamon every Saturday from all over Israel to have Kubane. Now there was a pot this size and it has to feed, let's say, 30 people. So I remember we walked, we lived in Jerusalem, so we walked to my grandmother's house and it was a, let's say, 25 minute walk. My mother would tell us all through the way, now kids, remember, I do not want to see you asking for seconds. There's not enough. If I see any of you asking for seconds, I do not envy you. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we get to my grandmother's. Everybody gets, you know, his little slice. And then my grandmother looks at it, and in front of 30 people looks at the pot, says, oh, it's a miracle, we have one extra slice. Who wants more? <laughs> now everybody knew that if he asked for seconds, my mother would kill him. There was silence, and then my mother would say, well, if nobody wants some more, I'll have I it. Will eat it. And she had two slices. <laughs> so I miss those days. And uh, in order to conclude this uh, conversation of ours, yes. Can you disclose uh, your plans for the future, the near future, the far future? Uh, I hope I'm not going to do more television for the coming year or two because I don't really like doing it. You are fed up? Um, fed up, nice. It has to do with food. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it won't be about food anyway, but um, I've had enough of television. I would like to, I hope I'm, I have some free time to write some more books, uh, to develop my publishing house, and to be with my partner and daughter. Sounds wonderful. Yes, let's Gil hope it happens. Gil Chovav, we wish you all the best. Thank you for taking the time. Toda Rabba and Shalom. Toda Rabba.